Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We'll start as we always do by having a look at some games that came out without being mentioned in a previous video, perhaps were never on the eShop page or they just weren't covered in one of these videos before moving on to the week at hand and we'll be looking at the dates going from the 30th of January up until the 5th of February. Okay with all that said then, let's get started. Looking at a few of the games that are out now that we never covered then, and we'll start off with Timothy and the Mysterious Forest. This is a game that's been mentioned in our comment sections a few times by various people, and appears to be a quite charming old school action adventure game, and I don't think it's unfair to say has borrowed very heavily from Link's Awakening. The art style was incredibly similar, even some of the assets like the trees used look pretty much the same, but it's only £6.99 and actually has just under 40% off of that price for about a month give or take at the moment, and I'm actually quite tempted to pick this one up. Maybe someone that's played it can let me know if it's any good in the comments section. Also out last week was Neoverse Trinity Edition. This describes itself as a time warping multiverse game which consists of adventure, strategy gameplay, deck building with some roguelite elements. You need to create your own strategy with over 300 cards and 100 skills and pick one of three characters each with their own unique abilities and specialities. There are 70 types of monsters that need to be defeated, each having their own different attack pattern and a host of skill combinations for each hero. Mark is actually working on a video of this game for us and it should be out by the time this video drops so I'll put a link to that in the top pinned comment. One that came out a couple of weeks ago and a few people have mentioned to me in the comments knowing how much I love my beat em ups is a game called Shing. You join a band of warriors in a bloody adventure going through the land of mythical monsters and mysterious machines so says the blurb and it says it has a freestyle combat system which allows you to mix and match combos switching between characters on the fly and it also says that you use the right analog stick in order to use your weapon. Now obviously I haven't played this one, I said as much just now, but it reminds me very much in terms of the style of the graphics of a game I did review a few months back called Nine Monkeys of Shaolin. If you have played this one, please do let me know if it's any good in the comments section. It sells for £17.99. Also out by the time of this video is Turrican Flashback. Now I was going to include this in last week's upcoming video, but it wasn't actually on the eShop at the time, and at the time of recording this it's still not on there, although I am told it's going to release on the 29th, so it should be on there by the time you're watching this. If it isn't, I've just recorded this for nothing and deleted it, so don't worry about it. This is a collection of four classic Turrican games. You have Turrican, Turrican 2, Super Turrican and Mega Turrican. The first of these came out in 1990 for the Commodore 64 and the second released a year later, released on a number of home systems, again such as the C64, the Amiga and is very well loved. Now when it says Super Turrican, I'm assuming it's referring to the Super Nintendo version because there was actually a game called Super Turrican for the NES as well. And Mega Turrican was one of the games in a series released for the Mega Drive or the Genesis. They are classic run and gunners with fantastic action and absolutely stellar soundtracks by legendary composer Chris Holzbeck. Starting with the first of this week's games then, this is a game called Habroxia 2. This is a shoot 'em up published by East Asia Soft and its predecessor was available on the PS4 and the Vita, possibly other systems, I'm not quite sure. Its main gameplay quirk was that the levels took place either vertically or horizontally, and this sequel uses that same idea. It has 20 different bosses, 64 ship upgrades that you can use, as well as branching paths within certain levels. It includes a New Game Plus mode, as well as a boss rush. Now seeing it as it was published by East Asia Soft, I did have a look to see if there's a physical release coming and as far as I can see there is not for the Switch, there was one listed for the PS4 and the Vita. If you hear differently then please do put it in the comments section but I don't think it's getting one for the Switch. Next up is a quite interesting looking 3D platformer called Blue Fire. This is selling for £17.99 but does have 10% off of that price until the 17th of February. It sees you embarking on a quest through the desolated kingdom of Penumbra, discovering secrets and exploring mystical temples. You'll need to find survivors who will then aid you on your journey and it makes a big point of mentioning collectibles so I'm assuming it has that collector fond nature of the 3D platformers of the 90s, early 2000s. On top of this though it does seem to also emphasise combat, talking about the ability to upgrade your weapons and your skills and the trailer most certainly seems very action based. So I'm assuming it's equal parts combat and platforming which will be right up some people's alley I'm sure. 
3D platformers seem to have had a bit of resurgence in the last few years, and I expect this is a game that will be very popular next week. Next out on the 4th we have a game called Nuts. This is selling for £17.99 and as much as it looks like a squirrel simulator to start with, it says its gameplay is based around the idea of surveillance and tracking. It says you start off having to record squirrels and report your findings. You'll need to think about the optimal layout for your equipment, exploring your surroundings whilst doing so and then reviewing your footage, sending the information back to your bosses. You kind of get the feeling as you're watching the trailer that something more needs to happen, there needs to be something sinister that unveils itself, and towards the end it gives, as you'll see, something that perhaps hints at there being more to the game than the premise would have you believe. I think I'd need to see reviews on this one to be honest, £18 is a lot of money to spend on the idea that maybe something more happens, but it's an interesting idea nonetheless, and it comes out as I said on the 4th. What the? Is that what I think it is? Also this week you have the release of Haven, which released back in December for Windows, the PS5 and the Xbox consoles, and is about to release now for the Switch as well as the PS4. This is a third person RPG where you play as two lovers, Yu and Kay, who escape the oppressive society on their homeland and end up on an uninhabited planet called Source. It involves some real-time combat using the abilities of both characters, as well as being able to craft items, rest and heal, cooking food etc using the resources you find on the world. It's a game that can be played in both one and two players, and I watched a few videos on this back in December. Some people said they absolutely loved the story and character development, others weren't so keen on it, but if you are interested, it comes out on the Switch this week. Next we have a game called Grey Skies, A War of the Worlds Story. This is inspired by H.G. Wells' classic War of the Worlds novel, moving the concepts of that novel from the 19th century into the 21st century. According to the blurb, you play as a character named Harper, and it's a third person game where you need to use stealth tactics to try and get past the Martians, crafting a host of different items including throwable weapons to try and keep yourself alive. It also mentions there is a leveling up system, although it doesn't elaborate on this, and says that concepts from the novel, such as the iconic fighting machine and its heat ray, as well as the black smoke, are included in the game somehow. Now I've said before I absolutely love any horror game that's set in England, being of course an Englishman myself it just brings it all home, and I think this game came out towards the back end of last year on other systems, although I can't find any real reviews for it. There are a few user reviews on Metacritic, but they vary so wildly in terms of their score it's hard to gauge where we're going with this one. It's selling for £13.49 and comes out on the 4th. On the 4th you have Skyforge coming to the Switch, which is an MMORPG which has been on Windows for a number of years now, it's even been on the PS4 and the Xbox One for a few years I believe, and it's inspired by science fiction and fantasy. Set in a world of gods and monsters, you need to team up with other players around the world to see off swarms of invaders from beyond the stars. This uses the free to play model and there are a number of options on the Switch eShop at the moment. You can download it for free and go from there. There's a starters pack for about £13.50, a deluxe bundle for about £27, all the way up to the ultimate bundle selling for £63. Now I've never played this game, I don't really have time for games like this anymore, but I think I'm right in saying that in this game you don't level up as such, but instead uses what's called the prestige system. I'm sure there's many of you that have played this game before and can explain it much better than I'll be able to, so perhaps you can put a bit of information in the comment section just to give people that are interested a bit of a heads up on how it all works. A keeper of knowledge, armed with deadly intellect, a rousing song, sounding out in troubled times, a master of the occult, turning dread upon the and finally for the week then you have ReZero, starting life in another world, the prophecy of the throne. That's an outrageously long title, in fact if this was speed dating, by the time you would got your name out, it will be on to the next person. 
All jokes aside though, from what I read, this is based on a series of what's known as light novels in Japan, and you play as a character that finds himself transported to another world. I believe in terms of the gameplay, it's part visual novel, but does have a 3D turn-based battle system as well. And I also read this is the first of the ReZero games to have English voices and a release outside of Japan. It's selling for a very high price of £53.99. It does have a physical release I'm pretty sure I've seen, along with a special edition. So there you have it, a number of games that have either just released on the Switch or are about to this week. Are there any that interest you? Please do let us know in the comments section below. Personally, the War of the Worlds game gets my interest purely for the source material and I'll be playing a bit of Turrican no doubt too. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.